friends, I've recently been on a roller coaster ride dealing with a health issue that popped out of nowhere. I believe in keeping it real on this channel, so in this video, I am going to tell you my lymphoma diagnosis story and tell you how I'm trying to adjust with living with chronic cancer. Welcome to the Dress Up Mom. If you're already a subscriber, thank you, and I love you. If you haven't subscribed, please do, and tap the bell for notifications. About six months ago, I decided to go see a gastroenterologist to see about some digestive issues I've been having. Now, it's something that I've been dealing with my entire life, but it progressively has been getting worse with age. I had already tried everything with diet and exercise, supplements, vitamins, everything. And I thought, well, might be time to go and figure out if there's some medicine I should be taking. So that's kind of what I did. And it was pretty helpful. Medicine worked for a little while, but then it kind of stopped working too. The doctor had warned me that this might happen and he suggested that we go and get a CT scan just to make sure that things were, you know, looking fine in my actual body before trying any kind of other medicine. So I called to make an appointment for the CT scan and I was told that the soonest available appointment was a month away, which I made the appointment at that point. I wasn't in any big hurry. Little did I know that this was going to be the beginning of a very long waiting game. I had the scan on a Friday and on Sunday I got in my patient portal the results of the scan and I could kind of tell that everything seemed to be fine with my digestive system, but there was some addendum that had this message, enlarge retroperitoneal and mesenteric lymph nodes suspicious for underlying malignancy such as lymphoma. What? I was confused, so I started to Google it. Well, the Googling was even more confusing and scary, so that following Monday, I called my doctor's office and he was in surgery all day, so I left a message and I got a call back from him that Tuesday night. He said not to really worry that enlarged lymph nodes in that area could be a cause by many, many things, but just to be safe, he suggested that we get a biopsy. Biopsy, it's kind of a yucky word, right? He also said that he needed to check in to see that they could do this needle biopsy because of the location of where these lymph nodes were, like in and around my intestines, and that they would have to be done in the CT scan machine. So by Friday, he called and said he talked to people and they did think that we could actually get a good needle biopsy in the area that was needed. He said to wait till Monday, call and make an appointment for the biopsy. So that's what I did on Monday morning. I called to make my appointment for a biopsy and I was told that the soonest available was six weeks later. Now I have really good insurance and I'm super grateful that I'm with a wonderful world-class medical team and I had heard about these sort of long waits that have been happening lately, but I was shocked when I heard six weeks. I basically stayed on the line and told the woman that I was sorry I couldn't wait six weeks to find out if I had cancer and she got on her scheduling and did what she could and she got me in three weeks instead of six. Now I should pause here. My husband Doug is a thank God 11 year survivor of throat cancer. His was stage four and I was very fortunate to be able to go with him throughout his whole journey and help take care of him during the process of recovering and getting treatment for his cancer. Now his treatment was horrific and he describes it as being tortured, but thank God he went through it all and he is now considered cured. 11 years ago when he was getting his diagnosis, I remember that once we got on this cancer train or even biopsies or things that were suspected to be cancer, things moved super, super quickly. His appointments were in days, not even weeks, let alone months. So three weeks passed and it was the day of my biopsy and I didn't really know what this would entail. It was over on the hospital side of things and I got there and realized, mm, I think this is gonna be a little bit more intense than I realized. The places that they were gonna go in and get these biopsies 
were in my back area because there aren't as many intestines in the front and a little bit to the side. The whole prep area here was also disturbing. There were four of us just covered by these curtains and I could hear everything that doctors were talking to with the other patients. And every single one of the patients there had some form of cancer they were dealing with. I think it was the very first time that I thought, hmm, I actually could really have cancer. Really up until this point, I thought it was gonna be something else. Now I wasn't awake for the actual biopsy, which took about 45 minutes. I had another hour of recovery or so. I went home, I had to rest. I was a little bit sore. I couldn't really work out for a whole week. And then I was told that I would probably get my results in about like four or five days. Well, it took about six days. And those days were actually pretty rough. I tried to keep really busy and not let my mind go all over the place. And I did know that when I saw my doctor actually calling me as opposed to getting the results in my patient portal, that the news wasn't gonna be good. I put him on the speakerphone so my husband could hear as well. And sure enough, he told me that the biopsy showed that I had follicular lymphoma. Now he said he was very surprised by this himself and that as a gastroenterologist, he didn't know a whole lot about this. He did say that the tumors were small and slow growing and that they usually respond well to treatment. So you can just imagine the whole world of tumors, treatment, I was pretty darn numb. We cried a little bit. I called my primary care doctor who I love, who was also Doug's primary care doctor during his cancer. He got into motion really quickly, got me a referral for an oncologist in less than a day and actually suggested who I should see. Now I have such an amazing support group, family, friends, and coworkers who have been with me on this journey from the CT scan on. And so calling and letting them know all of this was not very easy, but I definitely felt so loved with what people said. So I called to make the appointment with the oncologist that my doctor recommended. And you probably know that where this is going. I was told, okay, great. You can see him in six weeks. Now this is a renowned lymphoma expert, but still, again, I just pleaded on the phone with the scheduler. I cannot wait six weeks to find out what my cancer diagnosis means. Please, I'm gonna go crazy. The guy was really nice. He shifted some things around and said, okay, okay, I'll get you in in three weeks. That was better. But still, I knew I needed to wait three weeks to find out what my cancer diagnosis actually meant. Now, a friend of ours who was a doctor sent me a link, which was helpful, but again, it had so many different sort of permutations and things that could happen that I really didn't want to think about any of that. I wanted to know specifically for me what this all meant. So I decided not to read or Google or do any of that stuff. Now those three weeks were really rough, not just on me, but also on my family. Now Doug and I tried not to think about it too much, but it was hard. We did discuss and went through all these various scenarios that could be happening. Again, we had been through this before. His was such hell that that was sort of a worst case scenario that we knew could happen. And we just kind of went in spinning around and around and around and would get in some arguments. It was just really, really stressful. I also felt so bad for my children. Now they had had to go through this with their dad in their early 20s, which was traumatic. And now 10, 11 years later in their early 30s, they're thinking about their mom having to go through this. So it was really rough on them too, and I, ugh, it was just ick. Now also, there was a surge in COVID going on, so I really didn't want to get COVID mostly because I didn't want to miss this appointment, but sure enough, like two weeks before my appointment, Doug actually tested positive for COVID. We live in a thousand square foot condo. Now I never ended up testing positive for COVID. I didn't feel really good, but I guess, thank goodness, he got it and was already sort of over it. And we were both over it by the time of our appointment. But I mean, I just couldn't believe that. During the three week wait, I felt so incredibly supported though. 
there was such an outpouring of great messages, flowers, and gifts from family, friends, and loved ones. I was deeply touched by this and did try to practice as much self-care as possible with yoga, exercise, my daily meditation. All of that became even more important. When Doug was sick, he said the healing code prayer throughout the day. He sent it to me and I incorporated it into my daily ritual. I also added affirmations my son Dane sent me and chanted Ho'oponopono throughout the day. It is a simple ancient Hawaiian system for cleaning energy that really helped me and it's super simple. Basically, you say to yourself, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. My favorite yoga teacher gifted me the book Zero Limits that goes into detail about Hopopono. I enjoyed reading that too. Well, I tossed and turned a lot the night before my appointment and tried to keep as busy as possible during that day. My appointment was in the late afternoon. My daughter Tiara called during that day and said, Mom, I'm not able to concentrate. Can I please come with you and Dad to the appointment? So she did, which was super sweet. Doug could go with me inside the room to meet the doctor. Tiana couldn't, and she had to be in the waiting room. Now, an oncology waiting room next to the chemo ward is no fun. It really kind of makes you take inventory of your life. Well, the first person that we met was a doctor who introduced himself as one of the fellows, and he told me he was there to answer any questions and kind of give me a little bit more information before the actual, you know, specialist oncologist came in. Here's what we learned. Follicular lymphoma is a very slow growing cancer that may appear in your lymph nodes, your bone marrow, and other organs. There are ways to treat follicular lymphoma, but the condition often returns. Healthcare providers consider follicular lymphoma a chronic illness. I do have some night sweating, but I kind of think that is more menopause related, so I didn't have any of these other symptoms. I did ask, it's typically not genetic, there is no known cause, and there's no 100% known cure. Now I asked about staging because you know that we did that with my husband's, and he said that with this kind of cancer, they don't really do staging because it's more about the size and the way that the tumors grow. If he had to guess, I probably had stage two. The oncologist then came in and he definitely knew his stuff. He was very matter of factly, not sure about his bedside manner, but he did tell me that I had multiple tumors in my back and around my intestines. He also said that I have low grade, non-aggressive, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now he said this is really good news, but that there is always a risk that it can get a little bit more aggressive or that it can turn into some other form of cancer. Because I'm in good health and I don't have any of the symptoms, he told me that we're gonna do watchful waiting. So watchful waiting means that you're monitored regularly. And he explained that I would need to come in every four months, get blood work done before that, probably have a CT scan every year and see how things were progressing. Down the road, he said if I did get symptoms or things were progressing more rapidly, that there is a chemo and I think an antibody treatment that they use, but that the chemo isn't horrible. You don't really lose your hair or have like a lot of nausea or anything. He did say though that the next step was for me to go get a PET scan just to make sure that there wasn't anything else going on in any other part of my body. He marked the PET scan stat and I called the next day to make it and you're probably gonna know what happened. I was told again, another like five or six weeks for the PET scan. I again pleaded and got the PET scan moved to three weeks. Like the moral of the story here is don't take your first date, see if you can get things moved up at all possible. This time the waiting was a little bit easier. I had learned some of my self care techniques and I wasn't thinking about it too much. I mean, of course you think about it a little bit, but again, I really was getting sort of used to this whole thing by now. PET scan was super easy to do. It was actually kind of relaxing. I think I got my results for that in about mm, a day. No, it was more like two or three days that I got the results. I got a call saying, hey, let's do a video conference. I'm thinking, oh, video conference, because the doctor told me, you don't hear from me, that's great news. When I called back again, finally they said, oh, no, 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 the doctor said this doesn't change any of the diagnosis. If you want to have a video conference to go over the results, you can do that. 
Now, I already had an appointment scheduled for four months, so I decided, you know what? I don't even want to go over this pap scan on a video conference. I will wait, get that done when I'm in four months there because frankly, I just wanted to not think about this all for a while. So I know this is a long story if you're still with me and it's just the beginning of my story of living with this. I would probably never have known this if I hadn't gone and got the CT scan. I still think I would rather know and sort of be monitored and catch things earlier, I think. So really staying healthy, eating really well, getting exercise are gonna be super important, self-care with meditation, keeping my yoga practice up, also fatigue is something that happens with this so the suggestion to make sure i'm getting a lot of sleep so that's all good for me regardless and something that i'll amp up even more i did read you know a study saying that people with this condition do struggle a lot with anxiety because you really never know you know when you could get treatment if you're going to get treatment and it comes back and so it's just one of those sort of mind games you got to play with yourself i did find this note from the cleveland clinic encouraging though cancer is never easy even a slow growing form of cancer like follicular lymphoma people who have follicular lymphoma may not have symptoms for several years but when they do, they may find themselves cycling treatment, remission, relapse, and then more treatment with no end or cure in sight. But researchers are using different treatments that may do more to move follicular lymphoma from the list of chronic diseases to the list of curable diseases. If you stayed for this entire video, thank you so much for letting me share this. It really does help. This makes me even more determined to live each day to its fullest. Do you know anybody with follicular lymphoma? I would really love to know that in the comments below. Or if you yourself have it, I would love to know that and connect with you. Until next time, have fun and dress it up a little.